I was checking on my potatoes today and we've got a problem. I've grown my potatoes in buckets this year and they look like they're doing really well. The plants look healthy, they're really growing and got some more growing over there. But I have a big problem. I've got this. This isn't blight, although it's a relative of blight. It's called brown spot. And the unrelenting wet weather that we've had has probably brought it on. Now, of course, you can buy blight resistant uh, varieties. And I thought these were, but maybe because this isn't blight per se, but brown spot, which is just a cousin of a early and late blight, that it's susceptible to it. Also, maybe because I also have these uh, plants growing relatively close to one another. Although I think if you had them in a, I don't know, I guess if you had them in a road, they would have uh, air uh, going on either side. So maybe having them bunched up like this on my deck wasn't such a good idea that it wasn't enough airflow to come through. But again, when you have 20 out of uh, 30 days or more in a month just raining, and even in those 10 days or less when it didn't rain during the day, overnight it would rain, uh, you just might not be able to escape it. But I've got some over here as well in these plants. So to control brown spot, what you use is a, uh, a copper fungicide. And it just so happens I use that for my Bordeaux mixture that I use on the grapevines. And you mix it at a rate of three to six teaspoons per gallon of water. Uh, uh, that's like one to two tablespoons uh, per gallon. So I'm going to mix that up and I'm going to apply it over the uh, potatoes. It doesn't uh, kill the fungus. It just helps stop it from spreading and stop it from, uh, I guess when it rains, it's, it doesn't allow it to splatter over the rest of uh, the plants. Of course. All right. I have a gallon of water here. Well, and fill it the rest of the way. I was just going to actually just pour it into the watering can and just do it that way, but using the sprayer, it'll allow me to get underneath the uh, leaves as well as on top. Now, a lot of these leaves aren't exhibiting any signs of the fungus and interestingly in this plant here where it's showing up here in the plant in the same bucket next to it it doesn't have any signs of it which is interesting so i've gone through and i've sprayed the top and the bottoms of the leaves and now what i'm doing is i'm going back and spraying the soil because the fungus can actually live in the soil. So it can overwinter in the soil too. So they recommend spraying the soil too around the plants to help prevent the soil from surviving. So I'll be going through now and doing all my buckets. 
And what's interesting about this copper fungicide is that it's almost like a, <laughs> a miracle cure for uh, what else your garden and it's supposed to be somewhat of I guess organic and now that doesn't mean just because something's organic it's good for you and applying too much copper to the soil can build up uh, copper in the soil and that's not good I prefer not having to spray my plants but when you have high conditions like we've had this year where it's just raining the entire <laughs> the entire spring there's been hardly a day that uh, it hasn't rained and like I said even when it's not rained during the day it's rained overnight so it just builds up conditions for funguses to develop. Now, not only can I use this copper on the potatoes and in my Bordeaux mixture for the uh, grape, grape uh, vines, but I'll also be using it on my peaches and probably my plums too. Um, turns out these uh, wet conditions have caused a peach leaf curl to form on my uh, uh, peach trees this year. We got a lot of peaches uh, growing on them and uh, this year I'd actually like to get a harvest. Spraying copper on it can control it except you can't do it during uh, its growth period that it'll uh, damage the, uh, the, pl uh, the tree. If, you, if I was to spray it now to control it. So what I have to do is actually spray it in the fall. And after all the leaves drop off the tree, come through and uh, spray it then, like around November, say. And then again in February or March before it uh, uh, starts to bud out, uh, spray it one more time. That I went through the other day and I cut off a whole bunch of uh, leaves you can see the cuts that I made up there on top. And it was interesting because it's only in this tree here, not in this tree here. And that was why I tried to cut it out so that it wouldn't jump from tree to tree. And I'm hopeful it doesn't. But again, the uh, copper is uh, like a, a cure-all for everything. And now I'm looking and I see my first evidence of it over here too so it looks like it has made the leap which is a shame now from what I understand on the leaf curl it just looks like hell on the uh, tree it doesn't actually affect the uh, fruit too much I, if I'm left untreated it can kill the tree but if it develops like this in the during the season it shouldn't uh, affect the fruit growing I'd still rather <laughs> be safe than sorry. All right, so I could see, give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you'd already do so and click that notification bell. And that way you'll be notified right away when videos like this are posted. Okay, thanks for watching.